first to catch your dragon. Oh, suffering scallops, thought Hiccup. Our dragons are what set us apart, bellowed Gobba. Lesser humans train hawks to hunt for them, horses to carry them. It is only the Viking heroes who dare to tame the wildest, most dangerous creatures on earth. Gobba spat solemnly into the snow. There are three parts to the dragon initiation test. The first and most dangerous part is a test of your courage and skill at burglary. If you wish to enter the hairy hooligan tribe, you must first catch your dragon. And that is why, continued Gobba at full volume, I have brought you to this scenic spot. Take a look at Wild Dragon Cliff itself. The ten boys tipped their heads backward. The cliff loomed dizzingly high above them black and sinister. In summer you could barely even see the cliff as dragons of all shapes and sizes swarmed over it, snapping and biting and sending up a cacophony of noise that could be heard all over Burke. But in the winter the dragons were hibernating and the cliff fell silent, except for the ominous low rumble of their snores. Hiccup could feel the vibrations through his sandals. Now, said Gobba, do you notice those four caves about halfway up the cliff, grouped roughly in the shape of a skull? Inside the cave that would be the right eye of the skull is the dragon nursery, where there were, at this very moment, 3,000 young dragons having their last few weeks of winter sleep. Ooh, muttered the boys excitedly. Hiccup swallowed hard. He happened to know considerably more about dragons than anybody else there. Ever since he was a small boy, he'd been fascinated by the creatures. He'd spent hour after long hour dragon watching in secret. Dragon spotters were thought to be geeks and nerds, hence the need for secrecy. And what Hiccup had learned about dragons told him that walking into a cave with 3,000 dragons in it was an act of madness.